Hello, hello, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you may be in the world. Welcome back to the big board. Looking at Stalingrad 42, Mark Simonich title, GMT publisher. Probably all you need to know if you're familiar with Arden 44, Ukraine 43, Normandy 44, Cox's campaign, Holland 44, you will know of which I speak. And Really what I wanted to do, I thought it might be interesting for those that have played some of these games uh, in Mark's series before, kind of the Zock Bond series before, I thought what might be interesting, <clears throat> given my limited experience with the series, was to go through these rules and uh, highlight some of the differences that I saw based on my experience with the game, noting that I've really only played four of the five, I think, titles, and each one only once, although I may have play, played out in 44 twice, I'm not sure. But nevertheless, what I thought I might do is just, uh, you know, we can, you know, I don't know where you want to look at the, the counters or the rules or whatever uh, while I talk, but uh, here are some of the things that I found that were somewhat different, uh, particularly given I'm playing Ukraine 43 right now uh, on Vassal. Uh, it was... Uh, interesting here. So let me just uh, run through a few things. And these may uh, not be entirely different from the core system. So I want that caveat to go out there for you. Uh, I'm doing my, I'm doing this based on my recollection of all of the games that I've played in this series. So if I'm wrong here, I just thought it might be of interest more than uh, someone getting online and ranting about whether or not I, I got it right. Okay. So, uh, First things were uh, Zock Bond breaking. Uh, so obviously, if you're familiar with what a Zock Bond is in this game system, you'll recall that uh, we, we have this ability to build a bond where a unit cannot move from here to here. <coughs> now, one, one thing that uh, I had noted r playing Ukraine 43 is I don't believe you could break these Zock Bonds in this fashion, where if I put a unit here, it would break this bond and allow this unit to escape. Now that may not be the case, I may be wrong there. That's one of the, the first things I'll happily admit to. Uh, everything else is basically the same with Zoc Bonds though. They all tend to work uh, in a uniform manner uh, per all of the other titles in the series. Now the next uh, primary factor was uh, the maximum number of combat factors that can participate in a combat out of a now, is it out of a hex or in total? I think it's out of a hex. Yeah. 40 factors uh, in a given combat. No, so it's, out of a, it's per combat. And 20 defense factors. So how is that going to work? Yeah. That's it. You're, everything else in terms of odds shifting is going to be reliant upon DRMs and, and column shifts. And obviously, if you manage to uh, catch somebody with less than 20 factors in a, in a, in a, in a hex, otherwise it's gonna be you know, uh, two to one. But, and then 20, so as, as I said, 20, uh, 20 factors uh, in a hex, and that's after doubling and halving. So that will, uh, that will be an interesting uh, thing to keep in mind as you uh, garrison a given hex depending on what the terrain is so although there's a lot of open terrain in these uh, in this particular on this particular map right uh, I thought uh, there's an interesting uh, set of rules around uh, air superiority so it's very different here uh, because of the in essence uh, absolute air superiority the Germans have uh, when they allocate an air unit it will stay on the, on the hex uh, or with the unit and you'll be able to use it in a defensive mode as well. Uh, so you get two usages out of each aircraft that you have uh, per turn. Uh, the advance rates are a little bit different in this game from some of the others. No need to get into the minutia on that. Just suffice to know that uh, the mech cav infantry advance rates based on the type of combat result you get uh, obviously slightly different given the scale of the game etc i mean let's you know let's not forget we're dealing with uh, in essence a three map game it's two maps here but it could have been 
one larger map going horizontal. I'm not sure why that was the case. Maybe it was a width issue. Um, supply overland is uh, five hexes versus a movement, was it? And I think that's the same actually as Ukraine 43. It was five hexes and then X number of movement points to a supply source. Whereas in this case, it's five overland hexes to a rail line or a road, I believe, and have to check that. Uh, you have a, seems like you have a much higher percentage chance of attrition in this game with 66% chance of losing a step in uh, an attrition role if you happen to be isolated. Uh, significantly different to me anyway from the percentage chances in Ukraine 43, if I'm remembering correctly. I probably should have waited to do this video until after tonight because I'll be playing Ukraine 43 online tonight. Uh, and you're all welcome to join in and watch on Vassal. And uh, in fact, we'll be on Skype as well and you can listen in. Uh, support points and resource points, are, and there are this concept of resource points. And that's a, uh, also a significant difference. And we should probably flick up to the rules to have a look at that. Uh, let me see there further up near the end here. You've still got all the same sort of stuff with uh, determined defenses and desperate defenses and breakthrough combat works the same. You do have to repair railroads uh, in this particular game. So there's uh, aspects of that, just like in Ukraine 43. And here we go. Yeah, so resource points, ASUs, uh, you know, art, uh, artillery support units and supply points, you... And to summarize this, a resource point is in essence an extra artillery capability that you will give to a headquarter unit and one of these guys and allow it to be used. Uh, so you'll use your artillery and then you'll use your resource point. That's my understanding of how it works. Unless, of course, you're doing clever things with massive barrages and things of that nature. Uh, supply points, you're actually going to have uh, uh, units that will be able to move on the board. Then uh, I guess you'll be taking those with you. If you really want to get down to the Caucasus, then you're into Grozny. You're probably going to need some, some mobile support points. So that's how that's worked into the system. I have not read the details on this particularly closely, but it's a basic throw, uh, I believe, where your... Uh, you're going to be using the supply. Oh, this is actually, let me just make sure it's not a throw. It may be just uh, supplying a number of hexes like Ukraine 43. All right. Yeah, here we go. Artillery ships, when a ready supply point is stacked with a good order ASU, ready or used, the, the SP may be used for an artillery shift, and then you remove it. So it's actually a supply point that is going to be used for artillery, not for keeping your guys in supply by the looks of it. Non-mobile supply points. And I probably should have read this more clearly before I jumped on. I've just got my notes here uh, beside the camera, and that's that's all I had here for you. Uh, there are also going to be garrison units, and then some specifics around the Muscarovka uh, and the Winter Offensive as well, which are module specific, obviously enough. You'll have uh, headquarter units similar to Ukraine 43, which will improve your stacking as the Soviets. NKVD units with a no retreat option. Mountain units and uh, these uh, these garrison units that I mentioned earlier on. And they deal with, uh, there's some special rules around the Axis uh, Romanian and Hungarian allies and things of that nature. So very cool and very interesting. I'm getting ready to start punching. Uh, it looks like we're going to have to probably do a double, double uh, movement of things. So lay it all out. Punch it, lay it all out, and then put it out on the board. Unless I, uh, because these are all grouped by army type. And I think the first time I play a game, I like to have the exact units in the exact place. After that, any 353 will, will do in a storm. Because uh, I don't believe we will be uh, penalized for uh, mixing and matching army groups and things of that nature in this particular game. So, all right, just a quick little look at that for you. Thought that might be of interest to you. And I hope you enjoy your version of it, if you have it. And I'd love to hear uh, in the comments down below 
if you've played or are playing, what you're thinking of it, uh, any things that you find that are interesting or different or difficult, I'd love to hear a little bit more because this is uh, one of the largest games I think that uh, Mark has uh, made in the past uh, and it will be uh, interesting to see how this system works at scale. All the very best. Talk to you soon.